everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got what I think is going to be a really fun kit to put together. This is a brand new one from Polar Lights. This is the 1/350th scale Klingon Battle Cruiser. And as an added bonus, we are also going to install the light kit that is out for it as well. This is a uh, complete electronics kit to light up the entire battle cruiser here. It's all plug and play. It's just a matter of getting all the lights lined up, you know, either epoxied or hot glue or however we decide to do it into the vehicle. And then we should have a really nice display piece. Now, this is a, like I said, 350 scale, so this is a decent sized ship. In fact, I believe the whole ship's going to build up to about this big and about that wide. So, should be a pretty impressive piece. Plus, we have all of our AK washes and stuff that we'll be putting on it, so we'll dirty it up, kind of make it look like it from the movie. Uh, looks like a great kit all the way around. Not a lot of parts, and... Hey, if you're a Star Trek fan, you're going to love this one right here. So, very excited about getting going on this, so let's get started. Okay, since this is a brand new kit, what I thought I would do is just quickly go over the different parts that are inside the kit, kind of give you guys a general idea. As you can see, we have two massive top and bottom pieces here. These make up the, the main part of the body as well as the wings. And one thing you'll notice right off the top on this, because this is was thought to be a light kit from you know when they started, they molded all of the parts in black plastic. And the benefit of that is black plastic will not have light bleed through like, like a clear or a gray plastic would. So that is going to help us right there because normally we'd have to go and paint the whole inside of the vehicle or put some kind of reflective tape or something inside to block out any of that light. So we've got the two big pieces that make up the, uh, the wings in the main part of the body. We've got this portion right here, this big giant sprue. This is going to make up the uh, part of the neck as well as the head of the vehicle. And actually looking at that, it looks like a giant ladle. And you wonder when the original special effects artist made this, did they use a giant ladle on the, <laughs> on the original filming model? And then this sprue, we have our engine nacelles. Some really big ones on that as well. Not too many parts there. And finally, we have our accessory pieces. These are all the little little parts here and there, like the windows, all that kind of stuff that uh, are all modeled or molded into this uh, giant sprue. Now, they have also give you a nice uh, display stand with a metal rod. This is going to be very helpful, especially because this is going to probably be a pretty heavy, massive piece. They also give you a engine bridge that has been molded in resin to give you a little extra detail. And finally, there are some clear parts as well as a set of decals too to do that. And since we're talking about the light kit, we might as well show you the inside of the light kit as well. And the light kit has all pre-wired LEDs. They're ready to go. We have our battery box and our main board right here, but everything is going to plug right into that. Some clear red parts, which will replace some of the other parts that are on the kit. And finally, big piece of uh, photo etch. And I guess these are probably windows, window detail, things like that. So, okay, we're going to start off building the front of the vehicle, the nose area, the head area, whatever you want to call this. Uh, one thing I want to point out to you guys is when you're about to build this model, is to really study the instructions a lot. And the reason I say that is because if you're going to add the light kit to it, the light kit is a separate set of instructions that kind of don't seamlessly fit into the actual kit itself. And what I mean by that is they basically say, just be careful when you're building sub-assemblies that you don't seal up anything that is going to require light kit later. So I really want to keep a really close eye on it as we're building that we don't seal something up that we think there's going to have a light inside of it. That way we don't mess anything up. Now with these right here we want to, you can see these are some pretty heavy duty parts right here, some thick plastic and we're going to use this base frame basically to let them dry. We'll, so we'll pop that in there, let that fully dry, glue the back up and then we can pull it out because we have to do a little bit more work on it at first. And then once we have that on there, we can go ahead and start putting the second row of this, uh, of the head of the vehicle, we'll call it, 
on to here and we'll start working our way around that. So I'm going to let this dry as well as I'm going to put these parts on next and then we can start working on the rest of the head of the vehicle. Okay, we're putting the second ring of plastic parts around here. And one thing I want to point out to you guys too is be careful there are no part print printed on the other side of the piece here. So a lot of these pieces look very, very similar and there are some rather large connection points. So when you cut all the pieces off and go and sand them, you put them down and they all start to look the same. So I think I've kind of figured out what we've done here, but just keep that in mind that you keep good track of your parts as you're cutting them off the sprues, especially any of them that start to look dissimilar like that. That way you aren't having a problem later on trying to match them up. Okay, now we're building more of the, the bridge section. What I thought I would do first and foremost before we do any wiring is always test the wiring before we get it going. So we've hooked up the, uh, the little uh, wiring components together here, and this is the F. So we plug that in. Hey, and look at that, all of them light up there. So that, that is good. So we don't wanna be putting anything into place, getting it all glued down and finding out one of the LEDs don't work. So we've got that ready to go there. Now what we're doing is we are gluing into place the sides of this piece here. One other quick other thing too I'll point out, this piece is, uh, is called out by the wrong number in the instructions. The instructions call it 11 and the part is 121 and it's on the clear section. So it made you kind of think that it was going to be black but it's actually a clear part that will get glued into place right here. So we're going to go down the line and get this glued in and making sure that it wicks all the way down inside there and we'll let that set up then after that is set up we have a couple other little sub assemblies we'll work on this is the portion that part of the bridge here and in here we have this that is going to get glued down just like that there is a red disc. This comes in the upgrade kit. It comes with a clear disc on the actual kit itself. And then it is followed up by the bridge that we were talking about earlier. That'll all get glued into place. But the reason we're getting the, uh, the lights ready to go is because the very last light, this big one, gets mounted into place right up inside of here. So we want to make sure all the lights are ready to go. And then once that gets, gets ready to go, we'll be able to glue this right on top of here. And finally, this little box back here. And you can see we've got quite a bit of the uh, of the uh, the bridge done on this. So we've got these little sub-assemblies ready. So I'm going to get these all glued into place. And then I'm going to show you what they look like before we start attaching the light kit. Okay, we've got the back of the, uh, the bridge on. And it had a little bit of a problem with some of the fit. The fit wasn't perfectly tight all the way around, so we're using a few clamps in the meantime to get it to line up and, and stay sealed. Uh, this portion has some pretty long pegs, and this kind of snaps right into place here, so that fit is pretty decent on that. And while that is setting up, we can go ahead and attach that piece we were working on in the very beginning. We'll attach that to the front here. We're going to put a little extra super glue. Use regular glue to glue it, but then a little extra super glue because this is kind of a kind of a fragile point right here. We don't want this breaking off later on. Now, this will be the most amount we'll start putting together now before we start putting lighting in because we do need to put lighting all over the uh, the front of the ship. Okay. Now you're probably looking at it and going, what did he do? He put all that together and I actually just dry fitted all this together. All of these pieces will come completely apart and including the neck, all these pieces. Uh, what I've done this for is I was looking ahead and remember this part right here is all clear and we would have to glue on the front plate that has all of these windows on it that will light up. Starting to think about it, if we glue all this stuff on, it is going to be a nightmare to try to mask. So what I'm going to do now is we mask this off as a whole piece and dry fit it all this together. We are going to go ahead and build as many sub assemblies as possible right now without gluing them because we still want to put the light bulbs in. And we're going to start getting these all sanded, cleaned up, and then we're going to go ahead and do most of the painting on it right now. Not the weathering, just the painting on it. And anywhere that we have areas that we need to fill in or anything, I think we can get in there, do a little filling, and still airbrush without damaging any of the light effects on it. Because you can see here, we've got the uh, this, this ring that's going to go inside here. 
trying to mask around that. We can paint the dome of the, uh, of the bridge separately as well as the front here. This piece wraps around the front like just like that. I think it's just going to be a lot easier that we go ahead and do most of the painting right now. One other thing I want to show you is I started putting together the engine nacelles. And I've got this lit up right now to show you guys. What I've done is I've taken this long rod and we've hot glued with clear hot glue into place the, uh, the light bulb. And it is going to get glued into place right in through here. This will get put on. See if I can do this all in one. Basically, you're going to see that this piece comes out the back here. And once again, it would be more masking. And then there'd be two running lights on the inside and the outside of the cell. Be more masking. So just take this out. Put this together as best we can. Airbrush the whole thing. If we have anything we have to repair on the seam up on top here, not a problem. We can go and do any repairs. Airbrush over that. But that airbrush will not be getting anything on any of the lighted areas. So... That gives you a general idea. I'm going to go through the kit right now and I'm going to start building a few more sub-assemblies for you guys before we start doing the painting. Because I, I was sitting there watch, looking at it and going, how am I going to do this? And I, that's the only way I think I can come up with right now is to go ahead and start building these assemblies, not gluing them together, just getting them ready for paint and then we'll glue them together after we snap the lights in. So let me go look and see what other parts we need to show you a little sub-assembly wise. Okay, I'm going to show you guys what uh, some of the little sub-assemblies we put together. These are the little pods that go on the, uh, the top here. I did have to go ahead and wire these in right now, and that is just because there's going to be no other way really to get these on there and get the lighting kit inside. So there is an external light right here. All we've done is put a little bit of masking tape over it for right now. We are going to go ahead and glue these into place, both, both sides of these here and we have both lighting kits on it. In the back here, there are gonna be two other lights. We're going to leave those out for right now because we have access to the bottom of this piece, and, but we will go ahead and glue this portion into place. And this too has the two little lights that we've masked off those temporarily right now. And what is gonna happen is all the wiring is gonna go inside here for the front, which this we're gonna definitely leave out. We don't wanna get any overspray on the, uh, the front red piece, and that gets mounted with this on top of it. So the lights will get mounted in here, all the wiring will get done, but that we can do separately. Also going to show you the, the rear, we've got the, uh, the other engines. These pieces are all just fitted into place just so we can do our paint job on them and uh, still pull them out. You can see the light bulbs go in the back here, and then we have the little red um, fillers that'll go inside there as well. You may have seen almost all of this put together. This is all just dry fitted together. It's, it's a pretty tight fit, so it's enough that we can get most of the paint on it. None of the wiring is in here because we're gonna pull it all apart once we get the base paint job on it. We can do any repairs and fixes on the side. We'll just keep it away from all the light bulbs. So you've got that. Of course, the front here has all been masked off. We also left the, uh, the front piece of this off. That's where the lights are gonna come through. This part, when it comes to the main body, I've gone ahead and I've hot glued the light bulbs into place here, and that is strictly, you can see a little of the strings there. This is a flasher, and then these are the two beams that go back. I've temporarily just put a little masking tape over them just so we don't get any overspray on it. And that is also true for the top wing. We've got these forward um, bright LEDs that are going to flash towards the front, so all the windows up front here will get lit up and we'll just leave the wiring inside of that. And the only thing we didn't put the, the uh, LEDs in yet are the, uh, the nacelles here for the engines. This right here, you also notice that I've been uh, put a little green paint on. I wanted to experiment and see color-wise, and I'm kind of happy with the way this color is coming out. This is actually just Mission Models, just green. Nothing else, just green, sprayed over the plastic. What I might do is put a little bit of a lighter color on there to get some panel variations. And that is because I was looking at, let's see if I can get it in here. I was looking at some of the box art of the, uh, the ship and the paint job on here. I'll show you some of the pictures right there. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% thrilled with the way that looks. I am not, it looks a little odd to me and I've seen all the Star Trek movies, the Star Trek TV show. I am, 
I'm a decent fan, we'll call it. I'm not uh, an expert by any means on Star Trek. But a lot of the pictures I've seen, the ship is actually kind of a grayish color too, based on screenshots. But I'm going to kind of go ahead and paint this the way I want it to look. And it might be 100% wrong, and that's fine. But it's my model build, so I want to have, it, I want to have some fun with it. I really like this green right here. We'll do it similar to what, what the box art says, but with a little, little flare on it. We'll see how we, we go on it. Now, what we can do now is we have to get the top and bottom of this glued together. Uh, to put it bluntly, they are a, a, a little bit of a difficult fit. And there's a lot of pins on here. You can see one up in the corner here. They, they're supposed to line up with the bottom. There's going to be some flexing and some other stuff that needs to be done to get these on here. I've already, just test fitting it, broke a few pins off. It was unavoidable. I uh, was just trying to get it even back together. I don't think it's going to be impossible. It's just going to take a little bit of playing around with it. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the top and bottom glued together. Now, I'm going to make sure all the wiring is coming out the proper direction. And I'm also going to put the two leads in that run down the outside here for the uh, the engine they sell. Because remember, we, we glued those up separately. So we need to leave those hanging out. Uh, so I think that'll be probably the easiest thing. Trying to go through this step by step, but still leaving us enough place to paint and get lighting in. I think what we'll do is we'll just wrap masking tape all around this and glue these two halves together and then start putting our general overall green color. We can always come back and we'll be able to touch up all of the seams and stuff like that. But we just want to keep the paint away from any of the lights as well as the light on the back there. That's why we're putting a, a overall green color on it first. So let me get this put together and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you putting the green color on. Okay, uh, I know I said I was going to come back and put paint on this, but what I thought I'd do is just show you a quick light test. We've got all of this glued together and that's why there's masking tape all over holding it and clamps and, and believe it or not, it didn't go as bad as I thought it was going to go. So, but all the lights are lighting up. We got our flashers. We've got our engine nacelles on both sides lit up. We have the two front lights. Hopefully you can kind of see down the, the front of that. And then the flasher that'll go down into the neck of the vehicle. So everything's working. That, that was great. And like I said, the top and bottom fit together actually decently. Once you start on one side, start gluing it and working your way to the other side. So uh, we're gonna let this dry for a little while longer and then we're gonna put some first coat of paint on it.
Okay, you can see we've got all of our base pieces uh, painted. I did forget to put these little side pieces on, but we, this is just the first coat of paint anyway, so that won't matter. Uh, now you can see I'm starting to disassemble everything. We're going to take the, uh, the, the bridge here, and we're going to start hot gluing all of the lights into, uh, into place. And then we're going to gradually go back and build up the, uh, the entire neck and bridge area. Okay, we've got all of the wiring inside all, all glued into place there, as well as the wiring inside here for the bridge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the time and I'm going to glue all of these parts together, making sure that we also connect the final two wires <laughs> together as well. And we're going to go down the line. If there's any areas that we need to touch up with the paint, we'll also go over that. But once I get all of this glued together, I'm going to come back and show you what it all looks like with the lights turned on. Okay, we've gone ahead and put some masking tape down the center here to hold the tape in place, just temporarily, so it's not in our way at all. We we'll also put a little uh, plastic tie on all the wiring to keep those all nice and neat. Now it's just going to be a matter of going down the line and using our Tamiya cement, which will first put some, actually a touch of super glue on all of these little pieces, and then we'll just work our Tamiya cement all down the seam here. And we'll let that set up with some clamps, and then we can attach the bridge. Okay, we've got the, uh, the lights hooked up. You can see down the front here, as well as the bright ones in the back. If it focuses. <laughs> And obviously we have to put another coat of paint up on the resin on top here. It's bleeding through. And we also have to frame the red windows on the bridge. But uh, that part at least is working okay. Now, we're about to build this other section in here. What I've done is I've taken the clear red and I've sprayed it with, to me, a dull coat. And what that'll do is that'll diffuse the light a little bit. When I was testing out the two red lights, just kind of show off like red lights. This way it'll kind of diffuse it a little bit more and soften it and make it more red over the entire piece. So with that done and dry now, we can go ahead and glue that into place. And then we can go ahead and attach the rest of the lighting inside here. Okay, you can see we've got the uh, engine nacelles attached. Now we're going through the process of sanding out all of the seams all the way around the entire uh, nacelle. Also, we want to fill in and make sure we've got a nice tight gap where the engine meets. It was actually not the greatest fit right around the edge right here. This one's not too bad. The other one has a much bigger gap that I'm going to have to go and fill in, but not terrible. It's something we can definitely do. And uh, we'll be working on this for a little while, getting them as smooth as possible. And then we can go right back over and fill in our paint job, just making sure that we stay clear of any of the lights that we've installed. And I've also gone ahead and painted up here. There's going to be two more lights that fit right inside of that. And finally, we've gone ahead and painted the, uh, where the engines go. This is kind of like a, an iron with a little bit of buff mixed into it to lighten it up. And these panels are the same. So we can go ahead and attach these. But I'm also going ahead and going to put the uh, clear red that I've, I've taken those and, and sprayed them with dull coat as well to diffuse the light a little bit. So we'll go ahead and get all those set up and then we'll pop those into place as well. Okay, I took a, a little break from sanding all of the seams on these nacelles, and you'll have to forgive me, I'm not positive if those are engines or not. I know there's engines in the back here, these might be engines, but we've been sanding the seams on these for a while, and we've got them pretty smooth, and we have to do some painting on them, of course. Uh, you also notice that we have the neck assembly uh, put into place. And that was pretty easy and straightforward. Once we just had to make sure we got the wiring in through it and then click the whole thing together and put lots of glue on to make sure that the thing doesn't fall apart later on. Now, this panel right here, I've just put into place temporarily. This is where the, uh, the on and off switch for the battery box will be. We also have this piece right here. This fits into place and you can actually see the lights in there and the in the lights the landing lights back there this has some pressure fittings that will pop in there that'll hold that in the place so we don't have to worry too much about that one this one i am a little worried about that there's no way to lock this in i mean it doesn't doesn't lock lock into place and might have to put some like velcro here and here that we can just stick it on there we'll figure that out at the end of the build to see how it goes now you'll also notice too that we've put some of the little, uh, I guess these are guns, and these little white things on both sides of the vehicle. When I was attaching this side frame right here, 
This part all fit really snug, but this one little bulge that has this floodlight that, you know, illuminates the side of the wing. I could not get rid of the seam under the, no matter how I flexed and did whatever I could to the wing, there was a huge gap on that, on both sides of it. And putty I thought would look terrible. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken some uh, strip styrene basically and cut it into some weird angles to look like it's another raised panel. It's real thin. I've glued it into place. It got rid of that whole seam, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. And I think once I paint over that and blend it in with a little weathering, I don't think we'd ever even notice it's there. Now, I have a few other, let me show you two on this. We've also got all of those back panels put into place. We've got to do a little filling, a little filling and stuff on that but uh, not too bad. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time now getting all the seams repaired, fixing all that stuff up, and then we're gonna come back and do the majority of the weathering and rest of the, you know, the painting to highlight all these great panels on. So I'll finish all that up and then we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've dull coated the entire model. We've sprayed it with dull coat lacquer over it and two coats of it to completely seal in our paint job. And what I'm doing now is I'm in the process of going over all of these panels and I'm using a, another color green. And in this case, we're using Mission Model Paints Russian Dark Olive number two. And we're highlighting all of these panels. Hopefully it shows up on camera well enough that you can see, but it's gonna give some uh, subtle variation to the, what would be normally just a big giant monotone green. Now, remember I have not glued this on in the place and I haven't glued this piece on. And initially it, fit a lot tighter when we are doing some test fitting on it now and it still fits on there really well but I'm debating whether or not I need to glue this piece down I don't want this falling off uh, I still think I can get the battery box out with this glued into place and I don't think I'm ever going to really have to get at the board maybe what I might do is just put like a touch of glue on each one that if I had to ever get it out to get the board out we could break it out but we'll, we'll decide on that as we go along a little further now, I'm letting the, uh, the paint dry for on these raised panels, like I said. Then we're going to take it outside. We're going to dull coat it one more time to completely seal that paint job in. And then we're going to have a variety of different AK uh, washes and streaking grimes and things like that. So we've got this one I'm really excited to use. This is AK's Dark Brown for Green Vehicles. And it's got this thing written all over it. So we're going to give this one a try first. So let's get this dull coated, let it dry off completely, and we're going to come back and start doing the weathering. Almost forgot too. I'm not going to use all the decals, but uh, the insignia right here we definitely want to use. So we have dull coated the whole the whole model, and looks like this one goes right about here. I also am going to put the one on the landing bay in the back. And we are, of course, using our Mart Fit Strong. We want this, because there's a lot of waviness in this, uh, all these panels, we want the decal to go completely over it and sink inside of it. So we're gonna put a couple of coats of that on there and then using a cotton swab, burnish it down. So there are only a few decals we're gonna put on on this thing, so we'll put those on, dull coat it again, and then we'll come back and start weathering. Okay, we wanna start putting our wash on and we're going to start off by doing the the bridge area here and we're just putting a thin little coat of enamel thinner on here just to get the wash to flow really well make sure it gets nice and wet and then we're going to start off we're going to use our dark brown for green And this using a fine brush, we're going to start tapping it all around and kind of blending it in here. You want all that detail to pop out. And we're going to work it in all over this entire piece. We're gonna let it dry for about five minutes and then we're gonna go over it with some cotton swabs and remove any of the excess, which we'll let this dry for a little bit. I'll come back and I'll show you that process. Now we're gonna just take our paper towel first, take some of the super excess off here. And 
And then with the excess mostly gone, we can now take a cotton swab and start cleaning off the high points. We want those to be a little bit cleaner. And just lightly going back and forth over it. It should start taking all the all the top layers off and still leaving it all into the, the little bumps and cracks and things like that. So I have a very, very large ship to start working on. So we are going to go over the ship right now and start applying our brown wash, just like we did on the, uh, the bridge area. And then after we get that all done, we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Now we're going to apply the enamel thinner to the back and we're gonna use an engine grime. It's kind of a dark brownish black color that will go in here and Kind of highlight all of these pen, all these little whatever they are back here, but it'll all make them stick out. So we're using the AK engine grime, and just gonna put a coat of this all in through here. And now, mixed in, we are adding a little bit of A-cased rust wash, too. And it's not necessarily that we want it to look rusty. We want to give it a little bit of a, an orange tinge to this metal back here, just to highlight some of the areas. And we'll blend this all together back and forth to the point it doesn't have any, you know, any stark orange areas. It's just going to give it a nice tone to the back. So we'll work on that for a little while now. Okay, you can see the two sides of the wing here. This one is still drying. This side has been unweathered. This one has the weathering on it. And what I've done now for this, since it's such a big area, we're just mixing up a little bit of the rust wash and a little bit of the dark brown till we get this kind of reddish brown, real dark brown. And we've put a lot of extra thinner inside of it. And what we're going to do now is just go over the vehicle, or the wing, I should say, and just really highlight all of those little panels. And just dragging it from front to back, just like you would see, like on streaks. In fact, we're going to add a little more thinner to this. Get it real thin. Yeah, kind of like that consistency that it just flows immediately into all the little little areas that we want. And I will normally keep a fan blowing on this, and that is just so it'll dry quicker. And, but we want to fill in all these little areas here. And then we can just take a paper towel and kind of blot off any of the excess here. Just go back and forth blending it. And after a few minutes, you should get it in all the panel lines. They should all start popping out. And as it dries, we get a nice, nice effect for it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. Okay, now we want to highlight this area in here a little bit more. So we're using some Tamiya black panel liner, thinned down with a little extra thinner. And we want to just make all of this detail really pop out. So just a thin little wash coat over all of these areas in here. Because it has got quite a bit of shadow in here. So we want that to all stick out in there. Well, here we go, guys. Here is our completed model, all lit up and weathered. And I have to say, I had an absolute blast putting this together. Now, there are some minor little fit issues like we talked about earlier, but wow, this is just a cool, cool model once it's built up. Now, I know some of the purists, the paint job might not be 100% accurate, but accurate to what? To uh, sci-fi. So we get to do it whatever way you want. That's the fun part of modeling. And 
man, I just, I love the greens and it just looks, it looks mean and, you know, dirty and nasty looking, just what I kind of pictured it to be. The light kit, very, very simple and easy to put together. Just keep in mind, you do want to plan ahead so you can make sure the wiring's in place as you go around. You also notice right here, I did put that big orange decal on the front. Didn't put the giant decal on the bottom. I thought that was a little bit too much. Uh, once again, but we did put the little ones up on top and as well as the hangar bay in the back there, which you can see right there. And as it goes around, now keep in mind too, that black plate up on the top there, you can see a little bit of a gap and that is only because I have not secured that down because I have to be able to get in and out of there to uh, turn the battery pack on and on to get it to, uh, to light up. Now I have it on a display base that's spinning right now. That's obviously not part of it but you can see all the running lights and everything. Just, just a great kit all the way around. Here's a quick picture too. Uh, it's so bright in the store here, it's hard to get nighttime photos of it, but all lit up. But I took this last night. Now the bridge was not painted yet, and that's why it's glowing so bright red. But this gives you a general idea how cool this thing looks when it's all lit up and it's dark. All the lights light up in the uh, the windows, the engines, all the flashers are going. Very, very, and, and the spots, the spotlights on the wings are really, really cool looking at when it's really dark out. Would highly recommend this kit. I had it, like I said, had a blast and I'm probably going to keep another one aside and maybe even do it in the gray color. So, so hey, I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.